so loving and so kind to you and so forgiving that he says, I'm going to forgive you even though you hurt me every day. topic for you guys i actually thought about this today i was in the shower praying and then god just said do this topic so that's what i'm gonna do i hope you guys enjoy it let's start this video all right so you guys <clears throat> we are going to be talking about blessings and being a sinner and if you're a sinner do you still get blessed by god all right so let's start with the definition of a sinner a sinner is a person who transgresses transgresses against divine law by committing an immoral act or acts. So, some synonyms for that are wrongdoers, evildoers, transgressors, um, offenders, criminals, trespassers, um, Jezebels. These are some of my examples. Jezebels, drunk people that... Um, like the drunkards, I guess, that's what they're called, drunkards, uh, thieves, liars, um, anything that isn't like God is pretty much, or in his, like, his mor moral standard, anything that God wouldn't do is a sin, and if you do those things, you will be considered a sinner. But, yeah, so if God wouldn't do it, if you haven't heard about God doing that, then you are a sinner if you're not saved. All right, so let's talk about what a blessing is. Definition of blessing is God's favor and protection. And the example says, may God continue to give us his blessing. So what I see blessing as, I see God as he's a God of grace and forgiveness. So when he gives out blessings, he doesn't, he doesn't um, discriminate against sinner or non-sinner. A, a blessing could be you being able to breathe. You, if you're, um, say, sleeping around with people and God gives you grace because he allowed you not to um, contract the STD. Um, another example of God blessing you is say you have no money and your mother gives you money or if you ask her and she said yes that's a blessing it might seem simple but it actually really is because the the truth of the matter is he they don't have to give it to you so just consider everything that's giving given to you by others is a blessing from god because if he wanted to if you were a sinner he could let you have nothing nothing at all so be grateful for the things that you do have, sinners and saved people. Be grateful. He blesses us every day, and he doesn't have to. He, bless, he blesses us with life, health, strength. He blesses us with our jobs. He blesses us with our families. He blesses us with our church ministries. He blesses us in ways that we don't even see. Like he keeps spirits and demons away from us. He keeps the devil from attacking us on a daily basis. You might be in attack one in a while, you know, but the the devil would be attacking you way more if God hadn't allowed those angels to fight off those demons so they don't get in contact with you. So just be grateful that God had favor on you and on your life and that he protects you, sinner or non-sinner. So, all right, we're going to do some... Um, so, um, it says fellowship with sinners. So basically this is what Christians should be doing if they're in, if they are in the body of God and they are constantly around sinners or they come in contact with a sinner. 
I'm going to give you a few examples of what you should be doing. All right, so Ephesians 5.11, it says, Do not participate in unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. That's pretty self-explanatory. You don't do things that the world does. And if you see someone doing things of the world, you need to expose them and tell them why they're wrong. Do it in the most loving way possible, but your job as a Christian is to tell them where they're wrong. Because sometimes they might not even know that they're wrong. But God, God puts you there so that they can have um, correct, be corrected and so that they can go on the right path through your correction. It could be something simple and you just save their whole entire life because they're like, I didn't even know that I was sinning and I didn't know that was wrong. Like, what do I have to do to get right? And you tell them and as the process goes, Eventually, hopefully, they'll get saved and they'll come to know God themselves and not want to be a sinner anymore. All right, so next one is Luke 6, 28. It says, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. As a Christian, as a saved person, you should not be doing things back to people that are doing wrong against you. You should not be, um, what is it called? Putting out the same nastiness that people spew out at you. You should not be putting out the same nastiness that people spew out at you. That's what this scripture says. Bless those who curse. So when somebody does something wrong to you, you do something nice for them. That's God's way. That's not human way that's not what your mind says to do but that's God's way you bless those who curse you and you pray for those who mistreat you you don't mistreat them back you say Lord help them they don't know that they hurt me or they offended me Lord help me to forgive them and move on and you can let them know hey I didn't like that you said that to me but sometimes they're gonna say okay I'm sorry but sometimes they're gonna say oh I don't care and your job as a Christian is to be okay with either answer that you get and forgive. All right, let me see. Psalms 86, 5. It says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in loving kindness to all those who call upon you. So, I see this as a message for us as Christians. You know, we all know that the God, God is good. He is forgiving. But I think that we should take that scripture and apply it to ourselves and how we, um, we are on a daily basis. So, we should be good as Christians. We should be doing good deeds. We should be good to ourselves and good to other people. And we should be forgiving. As God forgives us, we should forgive others. If you don't, if you can't forgive others, how do you, how do you think God feels when he has to forgive you? If you can't forgive somebody for something so small and every day you do something so great that hurts God over and over and over again. And he is so, so loving and so kind to you and so forgiving that he says, I'm going to forgive you even though. You hurt me every day. So just be aware of that. And, and abundant and loving kindness. I love that. We should be so loving and kind because God is loving and kind to us. We should be glorifying the fact that God loved us so much. He sent down his son to take away the the um Lord help me speak to take away the repercussions of what happens when we sin God bears it all so that we may live and be forgiven every day 
so that we may have burdens lifted off of our shoulders. He loves us so much that he just wants to see us do great things. He wants us to use our gifts. He wants us to be successful and wealthy. He wants to give us things that are bigger and better than what we want for ourselves. Sinner or non-sinner. Sinner or non-sinner. But the thing is, when he blesses the sinner, he blesses them so that they can recognize, hey, this is not you that you're not doing this on your own. I'm helping you. I'm helping you. You're not doing this on your own. He does that to get their attention. Like, why am I, why do I have so much grace and so much favor on my life? Maybe man, I know God, and God gives them all that. To, so eventually they can recognize, hey, there's something else that I'm missing here. There's something I'm missing in my life. There's something that I've been passing out, looking over. And God will reveal his face to those who want to know him. He will reveal his face. He will send someone to people so that they may get to know God. So that they, a person that can spread the word of God. To tell them about God. He will send you a person to reveal God's love and to explain why you have the things that you have and why he continues to bless, bless us because he loves us so much. We are all his children, sinner or non-sinner. Sinner or non-sinner. I'm trying to get you guys to understand that. God does not, he doesn't discriminate. He doesn't, he doesn't do that. He doesn't discriminate against sinner or non-sinner. But there are certain things that you can't get as a sinner that you can get as a saved person. There's limits, but he still blesses everyone. He limits the sinner and things that we can get. Because if you're a sinner, you're serving the world. So there's some things that you can't get because you haven't accepted God into your life and he you know, you're you're serving the world, so you get worldly things. Now, when you come to the kingdom of God, you get saved, you accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior. There's an abundance of blessings and just protection, favor, grace, love, passion, peace, just a revelation of who you are. He shows you yourself. And it's a beautiful thing. It really is. It's a beautiful thing. And that's something that worldly people miss out on. We get, as Christians, we get, we should be living so happily and so freely. I'm not saying freely as go do what you want, but freely as in free in your heart, pure in your heart, pure in your spirit. You should be the happiest person on this earth because you know God. But, um, yeah, you guys, just meditate on what I just told you guys. And just evaluate yourself and ask, do I want to know this person named God? If you don't know God and you aren't saved, do I want to know this person named God? And I advise you just to go open a Bible, go to a church near your house, go to a person that you know knows God, and ask. Ask them to take you to church. Ask them to help you get into con a relationship with God. Connect with him. Pray. Just just be in his presence. Help them. Just ask someone for help. Anyone near you that you know knows God. If you want to be saved, if you want to know the God that I know. If you want to feel the peace that I feel. If you want to feel the love that I feel on a daily basis. Go to someone that you trust and you know will not leave you on the wrong path and that you know is a Christian that goes to church 
Or you can ask me. If you, if you really need to, if you don't have anybody, DM me. I'm free to talk. I love you guys. I really, really do. I love you guys. With the love of God, I love you guys. And I don't want you guys to go to hell. And that's why I make these videos. Some of them are just for my own entertainment, for you guys' entertainment. And some of them are to get you guys' attention. And this is one of those attention-getting videos. So just meditate on what I just told you. And ask yourself, do I really want to go to hell? Do I really want to live my life without this guy named Jesus? And the answer, for sure, if everyone really like takes into account the life that they're living now and the life they could possibly live with God in their life, you're going to say yes to God. If you really, really think really hard, you're going to say yes to God. And um, so the answer to the, the title is, uh, yes, God blesses sinners. But you don't want to be a sinner. You want to be saved so you can get the full experience of being in the body of Christ. And get to know the love and the joy and the peace that I feel on an everyday basis. And get the uh, abundant amount of blessings that God has in store for you. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to hear more from the Lord. If you want to just support me on this mission to save souls. Um, just share to spread the word. I love you guys. I love you guys. With the love of God. I love you guys. If nobody has told you that today, I love you guys. I love you guys. I say this with the most open heart. I love you guys. I hope you can feel my love through this screen. I really do. And I feel God's love pouring out through me right now. Because I know it is. I love you guys so much. Have a blessed day. We are leaving the rose room.